Renaissance, how did they live? Unexpected daily life and origins of stuff we'll still use today. From weird sports and scary medicine to timeless expressions and some invaluable thinking we still use today, here are some reasons you'll be glad you didn't live during the Renaissance. If you like the video, click the subscribe button and in the comments tell us what's the weirdest thing you've ever heard about the Renaissance. And for some extra fun, find our mascot net hiding throughout the video. Why did the Renaissance start? At the beginning of the Middle Ages, while the Black Death or bubonic plague wiped most of the European population all over Europe, since there was a lot of open lands in the 14th to the 16th century, as well as possibilities for the masses to climb the social and political class, a new society was formed. And art became the way to show your status, especially in Florence, Italy. The most powerful family that emerged were the Medici. You may have heard of them in recent TV shows. Free roaming. As we mentioned earlier, the Medici, a very wealthy family in Florence, had so much money that they had lions and giraffes in the city squares. Well, the adventurous giraffes every once in a while will take themselves for walks and roam the city until caught again to be returned to their enclosure. What would you have done if you would have seen a giraffe roaming in front of you? Football season in Florence. The Renaissance also brought games that resembled the gladiator displays in the olden Roman Empire. Calcio Fiorentino or Calcio Storico, translates into historic football that originated in Piazza Santa Croce in Florence. The game was played by the aristocrats and even popes participated. To best describe it, it's like a mix between soccer, rugby, and boxing. During a visit to Venice in 1547, Henry III of France described the games as too small to be a real war and too cruel to be a game. And up to this date, it's still played. Medicine, the good. The bubonic plague opened the doors to new healing ideas that are still used today. Snail slime, now popular in South America and Korea, was used to heal burns and blisters. Seriously, go to any beauty shop in South America and you will find snail gel. Better marketing than snail slime. Printed Future When cell phones came out, it was the beginning of a new era. Fast, efficient communication around the world became a possibility. In the Renaissance, the same thing happened with the first mechanic printer. News, books, and information was able to move way faster than by handwriting. The biggest bestseller book? The Bible. But not in Latin, in English. And it's still the bestseller. Thanks to German inventor Jay Gutenberg for literally changing the way we connect to one another. Timeless expressions. An expression during the 1500s that you may have heard of is dirt poor. And although nowadays it has been modified to dirt cheap, similar meaning, really, poor people had dirt floors and only wealthy ones had slate floors on their homes. On the flip side, the wealthy having floors made with slate also meant they were very slippery when wet. So during the entire winter, they will spread thresh, a fancy term for straw, on their floors. By the time spring will arrive, the floor was open and all the thresh will slip away. A piece of wood placed at the entryway was invented, hence the threshold. Myths and other miraculous recoveries. Renaissance was known as an era of rebirth after the Middle Ages, but not everything flourished as expected. The northern Italian cities did very well and flourished, but Rome was left in ruins. Once a city with about a million people living in it during the Renaissance, even the Pope in the 1300s left to a nicer castle in Avignon, France for about 70 years and returned at the beginning of the Renaissance. 
while the Pope was gone, most of the monies that came from pilgrimage and donations, his guards and treasury all vanished, leaving the city in even further decay. With the Pope back in town, the city started flourishing again and Michelangelo was hired in 1508 to paint the Sixteen Chapel, named after Pope Sixtus IV who had it built. It took Michelangelo four years painting it upside down. Medicine, the bad. Not really making any sense of why this became a thing, but during the Renaissance, dogs and crow droppings were used for colic and dysentery. Try that nowadays and you will probably end up with both of them together. If that was not enough, use pig's urine to treat your next fever. In recent years, campaigns against tobacco use have been growing, but in the Renaissance, it was used to cure almost anything from female issues to cancer, hypothermia, head colds, and lots more. Tobacco was actually worshipped. Raining more than just water. When it rains, we may hear a person or two say that it is raining cats and dogs. But have you ever wondered where that expression came from? During the 1500s, the roofs were made of straw, piles and piles of it, where the pets will sleep. Especially the cats and dogs. Although you can imagine other critters use it as a shelter during rainstorms. Since the thatched roof had no wood to hold it underneath, if it rained too hard, the cats and dogs will slip and fall too. So, not a crazy expression after all, huh? Wine a bit? Hygienic conditions were really bad, especially during the plague, and the water was dirty and dangerous to ingest. So, wine and beer became the common drink of the era. Not surprising, in Germany and England, beer was the popular drink, while wine was cheap in Italy and France. The Pest Doctor The plague was still part of daily life, and therefore the doctors had to do something to tend to the needs of the ill and care for their own well-being. Since the illness was thought to be caused by the evil bad smells, large big masks were designed to be filled with dried herbs like lavender, roses, and more, or even vinegar sponges to prevent them from getting infected. The masks also had glass openings for the eyes. Plague doctors wore long coats, large brim hats, and carried a cane used for multiple purposes from removing clothing from infected victims without touching them to as far as taking the pulse of their patients. The plague doctors were so coveted that two were kidnapped and held for ransom when they were heading from Barcelona to Tortosa, Spain in 1650. In France and the Netherlands, some of them did not even have training. It just paid so well that it was worth the risk. Eating etiquette. Typically, when you're eating a lasagna, you grab a fork and a knife and, well, eat it. During the Renaissance, forks were actually frowned upon by the church and pretty much everyone. Spoons, knives, and hands were the implements of good table manners. Forks were first seen in the Roman Empire brought by a Byzantine princess in the 900s. It took several centuries and finally became popular in the 1600s after Catherine de' Medici and her son Henry III took it to France in the 1530s. Medicine, the ugly. Walking by a barber shop during the Renaissance, well, things may look a little dicey. Literally, barber shops nowadays do hair, shave with straight razor, and stop right there, the razor. Half of the tools needed to perform surgery were already found at the local barber shops in England. In the 1540s, surgeons and barbers united under Henry VIII to form the Company of Barber Surgeons, using uniforms and all. It remained active for 200 years after that. The Fashion of the Era these may just sound silly for us, but during the Renaissance era in Florence, women were not allowed to stand by a window. It will pull men away from God. Too much temptation. 
Since men before the age of 30 were perceived as immature and easily tempted, they were encouraged to get married after their 30s. On the other hand, women must marry by the age of 17 or they will become old maids. According to the fashions of the era, blonde hair was the hair color of high class and corsets were a must. Brunettes were seen only in the working class. The joking side. There was not just art, plague, and forks in the Renaissance. No, a medieval or Renaissance story wouldn't be complete without the court jester added to the mix. Purpose? To bring entertainment and joy to the royals and the upper class. They were sometimes found telling stories to the masses and, like the comedians today, joke about current events. Remember to click the bell icon after you subscribe so you can get instant notifications of all of our new videos. Renaissance Discovered. What else shall we explore? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.